and about, are we? Lieutenant Commander Tran. This must be the Lexington. I made it. You're in the med lab. We had to carry you in here. Oh my god, what time is it? What is the ship's position? It's 2145. We're about 30 minutes away from entering orbit around Persephone. The Jericho is in position behind us. Do you have anything to say, Lieutenant? Why are you pointing a Mark II buzz gun at my head? There was a report of a disturbance in your quarters. I authorized a petty officer and an ensign to break in. They found you writhing on the floor next to your bunk, screaming about hype. A UN ship called Dharma, Pandora, and the deaths of the entire crew of the Lexington. So here are my problems. First, you aren't supposed to know about hype. Only the captain, myself, and the medical officer have been given access to those files. Hype is classified top secret Omega. Second, you refer to a specific UN ship that has been unaccounted for by Alliance Intel for months. The Dharma is one of the UN's new Geneva-class heavy cruisers. Another classified fact. This time, top secret Gamma. Third, you refer to our target on Persephone as Pandora, a classified code name given to it by Alliance mission planners. Last, and frankly most disturbing to me, you ranted and raved about everyone in the crew of this ship dying, except for you. Now I want some explanations, Lieutenant, and I want them now. It's a long story. Try me. Well, it's like this. <sighs> that is the most ridiculous story I've heard since I graduated from the Naval Academy. Now, I'm sorry, Lieutenant, but I'm trained to think of the simplest explanation as the most likely explanation. The simplest explanation is, you're a UN agent. You seem to know all about this mission. You've probably informed the UN as to our destination and time of arrival. Is that why you wanted to know where we are? You're expecting an ambush? Poole is the traitor, not me. You know, you may not be an agent. But it seems the most likely explanation, given the circumstances. I have to assume the worst. Have you informed the captain yet? About you? Well, he knows that I came down here to find out what was going on. I haven't yet briefed him on the potential security problem. <sighs> He's not going to buy your bullshit about alternate timelines and machine creatures. Will you at least tell him that the Dharma is lying in wait on the other side of Persephone? Of course. We're loaded for bear anyway. You can't win this battle. You need help. Computer, please page the medical officer and alert him that the prisoner will need to be put under sedation and restrained. Wait, please tell me. It's important. What harm can I do? I'll be unconscious during the action. We'll have a full complement of drones out front in a standard screen as we go in. The Dharma has 12 active drones. This disadvantage is made worse by the fact that her drones outclass ours. You can't win this battle without my help. Your help? You've got to be kidding. I fought and won several battles in the alternate timeline. The key is hype. No goddamn way. Hype hasn't even been battle tested. I've had enough of your crap. If you give me a boost of hype, the drug will take effect in time for me to fight that battle and win it. Please keep quiet until the medical officer gets here.
bridge, Lieutenant. Sir, you're walking into a trap. I need to talk to you immediately. This better be good. A UN ship with superior firepower is waiting for us on the other side of that planet. She has 12 active drones that can outgun and outfly our basilisk drones. There is only one way to defeat that ship, Captain. How do you know about this, Lieutenant? There's an objective test to confirm what I'm telling you. Send one of our drones around to the other side of Persephone. Monitor the telemetry. You'll find the Geneva-class heavy cruiser UNS Dharma and 12 Gali-class drones waiting to ambush us. The Dharma? Damn it. Why didn't this come up before? How do you know this? I didn't know until recently. Sir, please deploy a drone. The fate of this mission and much, much more is riding on the next few minutes. Lieutenant Mandon. Take drone Foxtrot out of the screen and vector it into a polar orbit around Persephone. Maximum acceleration. Yes, sir. Foxtrot is on its way. Okay, Lieutenant. Let's assume for the moment that you're correct. How do we fight and win? The Med Officer has tanked me up on hype. I'll use the Telepresence Unit on the tactical console to win this battle. There wasn't time to alert you. We only have a few minutes. Hype! Jesus Christ, I gave no authorization for use of hype! You actually ingested that poison! Yes, sir. You're a dead man, Lieutenant. I know that. Who are you? Are you an Intel Special Ops plant? Do you have experience with the hype telecon system? I'm the best hope you've got, Captain. Sir, I've lost telemetry from Foxtrot. You were right. And they popped my recon drone before it even had a chance to fire. We're dead meat if we try a standard attack pattern. Lieutenant, take tactical. All enemy drones have been destroyed. All enemy ships have been destroyed. And so a new timeline was created, overriding the old one that had been my reality. There was no material evidence that the alternate timeline had ever existed. All I had were my memories, and I knew that these would fade until the alternate timeline was really gone forever. After I refought the battle with the Dharma, I explained what had happened to Captain Dana and then went over it again with a groggy Lieutenant Commander Jennifer Tran. As unbelievable as they found my story, they were swayed by my hype-driven defeat of the waiting UN heavy cruiser. 
They were even further convinced that something extraordinary had happened to me when I exposed Poole as the traitor and produced the evidence of his activities. Poole was placed under arrest and sealed in his quarters to await trial on Earth. They agreed to my unusual request to go with the science team on the first run down to the surface of Persephone. The planetary lander once again made the trip from the Jericho to the Lexington and then down to the surface of the planet, this time with a crew of five. I walked the science team through the gateway activation sequence inside the ancient installation. I took the science team leader in confidence and told her that I intended to go through the gateway once it had been calibrated and I exacted a promise from her that she would destroy the gateway control mechanism once I had stepped through. I was waiting at the foot of the gateway when I heard the familiar whine build up and saw the beginnings of the space-time vortex forming. I stepped through and left the year 2134 behind me forever. As I record this, I am sitting on a raft that floats on a large but gentle lake just outside my house. I have lived in this ultimately comfortable house for about five years, ever since my arrival here. I wanted to make a record of my strange adventures before the memories disappeared. When I went through the gateway back in 2134, I materialized once again at a point 150 years in the future. This future was different. The Alliance did indeed win the war. The plan of the long-forgotten beings that created the installation on Persephone was brought to fruition. A new race of sentient machines now coexists in peace with a human race that numbers in the tens of billions of individuals. The new beings share their cyberspace world with us, and they have used vast space-based self-replicating robot factories to create something for us in the physical world, a gift a tribute. The Earth is gone. In its place is a Dyson Sphere a vast, hollow construction that surrounds the sun at the same distance the Earth once orbited. Continents and oceans lie on the inside surface of the sphere, forming an Eden-like landscape that is for all intents and purposes endless. For the Dyson Sphere has enough surface area for a trillion Earths. It will take a good many millennia for the human race to completely populate its new home. Meanwhile, the new beings that we now share the universe with are living on the outside of the sphere. They pursue the basic questions of existence. They have launched the first intergalactic ships. They have long since passed the point where we can even comprehend what they are doing. As for me, I find all of this to be a mixed blessing. The evolution of these fantastic and powerful beings was inevitable. But what of us? What of humanity? What purpose have we now beyond simple existence? And what of the other me, the one that was stranded in the grim and decaying future of the alternate timeline? Did I die?